Welcome back everyone. Today we're doing things just a little bit differently as you can tell from this setup, but we're going to be talking about a gear review, but not anything in particular. We're really going to be talking about my tripod, how I set it up for work and why I set it up that way. I've been asked this question a lot by my fellow content creators, so I figured the best way to get into it is just to do that. Let's go. Welcome back everyone. Like I just said, we're going to be talking about my tripod, how I have it set it up for work every day because we have to carry a lot of gear. So how do you organize it and carry it properly and still be able to get the job done? Well, today we're going to be talking about it. Let me remove the very first piece of gear and that is this guy. Right now I'm currently using the AD300 Pro. I usually use the AD200 uh, because it's more than large enough, but it messed up on me. The power button is no longer cutting on. Dealing with Godox's customer support has been a nightmare. It has been broken for a little over a month now, and I still don't even know where to ship it to. They keep telling me that it qualifies for a repair, but then send me a link to a site where I can buy new Godox products. I don't know. It's very, very confusing. So either way, Flashpoint, the 300 Pro, I believe it's called. Aha, here we go. Flashpoint 300 Pro, there we go. That's what I'm rocking with right now. As you can see right here on the front, I've kind of, let me bring this in close to you so you can see, here we go. So this was a little screw hole adaption. So I put an adapter plate and a hot shoe so that way I can take a wire and bend it around the neck. So that way I have a holster place for my AD300 or my AD200, whatever I'm shooting with. Um, a lot of people will say, hey, why would you go through all that trouble when there's a connection point on here? Couldn't you just put a connector point on here and connect those two together? Well, I could, except for the fact that I like having this flash handle. Now, the AD200 has multiple connection points, and when I'm rocking with that, things are a little bit different, but this only has the one connector part at the bottom. So with that being the case, it kind of limits me and how I can carry this thing around. I could either have no handle at all and just kind of hold it, but it's very bulky, especially compared to the AD200. I mean, it is way more powerful. It's way more than I ever need on a shoot, honestly. It's larger than I need to carry, but since my other one's broken, I'm just rocking with what I've got. And like I just said, I personally love to have the handle grip. It allows me to reach around wherever I need to. It's kind of fluctuating, so it's nice. If this thing had another head, then I would probably have a different rig. But since it does not, I just made one and it fits right in there. Now, another thing you might be asking yourself, wow, Jeremy, you're a professional photographer and you shoot that many properties a day. Look how old and raggedy your tripod is. And I would say to that, yeah, look how old and raggedy my tripod is. This is what it's all about, to buy gear that lasts the test of time. This thing was actually handed down from one of the people who taught me how to be a photographer at a very young age. Uh, Mike Barbarito, Chris Dugas, if you're watching this, boom, shout out to y'all down in NOLA. But either way, this was being thrown away by them, and I just repurposed it. And that was probably... 15 years ago and I'm still using this Monfrotto tripod. It works like a beast. I only have one problem with it and it's that the legs, like no matter how much tightening I do, they always kind of fold in on me. But the piece of gear is literally 30 years old and I've never needed another one. I have, if you look around my studio right now, I have five bigger, bulkier and newer tripods, but this one just seems to work the best for me. As you can tell, I have also removed the bottom part of the center bracket because I've noticed it gets a lot in the way for me while I'm shooting. I do a lot of the super wide, open up the camera leg so I can put it on top of things. And that used to be something I would always have to take off of my tripod in order to accomplish that properly. Uh, so now I don't have that problem. I keep it off. I keep it in my truck in case I ever need it for exteriors where I gotta get super, super high, but that's very, very rare. I can't remember the last time I actually attached it. Uh, so let's go right on to the next thing and the most important thing in my opinion, obviously camera right on top. And I am personally one that likes to shoot with an external monitor. Here it is right here. Super cheapo version feel world. I believe is what it's called. It cost me like $90, but I'll tell you what I like about this setup. Originally what I had was this monitor was attached 
down here where this thread point was. But the problem that I had there is that the monitor was stationary while the head moved. So with the HDMI cord connected, it only had, I could only move it a little bit. So I had to be very conscious about where I was placing the head and the feet. Um, so what I did instead is, I don't know if you can see it. I'll bring it in real close again. Here we go. I'm looking at this clip right here. This thing is made by Small Rig. And if I push this forward, you can probably see a little bit better. So this guy right here is made by Small Rig. It clamps to the inside workings of my Monfrotto tripod with this simple screw right here. And it has this external little double notch guy that I connect the monitor to. Now what's nice about that is when I come back and bring it back, like I said before, it articulates with the movement of the camera. Now, a lot of other people, you could also do this a different way. You could get a camera cage, like a small rig or a tilta or something like that. Um, and that would traditionally have this monitor either mount to the top or sometimes to the bottom back or usually to the side. Now, the reason I like this so much is because it allows me, like even before when I used this, I had issues when I put it so close to a wall. Now I can put this even closer to a wall without issues and I can still tilt this around as needed. Like this thing is very, very mobile. Like it's easy to turn around, it's easy to move. And like I said, it moves around with the tripod. That's the most important thing. Trust me, of everything I've learned from switching to just operating off the back of the tripod itself or the back of the camera itself, should I say, um, when I started using a larger video rig or a larger monitor, this was an issue I was having constantly, is trying to figure out this cable situation. So that's why I really wanted to come in here, get a little bit closer, get right up in your face. Let's move this mic over here a little bit so we can probably hear me a little bit better. Here we go, boom. Now, I'm right up in your face. Hopefully you can hear me just as well. This is a super important little clip. It made this whole process so much easier. Um, I'll show it to you again. Here we go. Here's the whole clip in its glory. See, this is the part that tightens it. Here's the clip itself right there and here is the little double boom arm for the monitor mount i could not recommend this setup enough i use it every single day um, i haven't really had to change the way i carry my gear in a while now because this setup is literally perfect I can't think of a better setup. i tried the cam ranger honestly because that's very popular in our industry but I just typically, there's something about being behind the camera, pushing the button that I really, really like. I don't know. It's just part of my workflow. Maybe that's how I was like brought up in the industry. That's just how I do things. Oh, look at that. I just took a picture for no reason at all. Turn that guy off. So like I was saying, this guy right here, this setup, this cable and this small rig clip really, really saved my life. Now, if I can give you just one very important tip from this whole video to learn, it's that number one, as I've mentioned in my other videos, you don't need to buy new things to be successful and productive. As I just mentioned with my tripod that is probably as old as me, um, I don't need a new tripod. Why would I buy one? I'm sure they make some kind of fancy get up to slide my light into, but why do I need that when I just had a wire hanger laying around? This clip I did have to buy, so but that's just because I couldn't figure out a way to do it without the clip. Eventually, I think about removing the clip and taking one of these thread holes and threading it into the back of the base plate mount and screwing it directly into there. That'd probably be the easiest because I really wanna stay away from operating with my camera in a cage on a daily basis. I carry it around a lot and as we mentioned before, weight is king. Like your weight distribution and the amount of weight you carry really, really matters for your back later on. So please don't just avoid it now. Think about it all the time. How can you carry things better? How can you be more efficient? The more efficient you are, the more money you make per hour. The less time it takes you to photograph the house and the less amount of time it takes you to edit that house, the more amount of money you're making per hour. And that should be important to you. 
So don't buy new gear. Unless, of course, you're buying this one clip because this mount up here is crucial. I was saying it earlier. I got sidetracked. If I can bestow one piece of information onto you about carrying a monitor is that you do not have to buy a cage. Cages are hundreds of dollars. This clip was $25. That's the difference. But the main point I can give you is to mount it to the actual head itself so that it rotates with the camera. You do not want the monitor itself to be mounted to the tripod with a fluid head that is not attached because then you'll have issues with cabling. You can always go the other route that I was just talking about with the Cam Ranger, but I have never personally liked that route. This is my jam. This is how I operate every single day. Thanks for watching. Come back, check us next time.